I am Dr. Chuan Liao, Assistant Professor in the School of Sustainability at Arizona State University. Today, I'm very happy to present my research at the IASC 2020 Web Conference. My talk is about herding decision-making in the commons of Southern Ethiopia. This research was provoked by my learning of the tragedy of the commons since graduate school. According to the argument, each individual always has incentives to add more cows to a limited patch of pasture, which eventually exhausts the natural resources and leads to system collapse. Photos like this always support the argument of tragedy of the commons in which there is a large herd on degraded rangelands. However, are pastoralists really irrational and are pastoral food systems are doomed to be unsustainable? Many empirical findings suggest that there are different strategies that allow pastoralists to survive and prosper in those arid and semi-arid environments. One of the most important strategies is mobility. In Central Asia, for example, the Kazakh pastoralists migrate between the Gobi Desert and the Altai Mountains that covers a distance over 200 kilometers on an annual basis. And this allows them to search for forage resources at different locations while redistributing grazing pressure throughout the landscape. In the Horn of Africa, the Boran pastoralists enjoyed a flexible movement within their perceived community herding boundary and sometimes moved beyond the boundary to seek water and forage resources by negotiating with community, neighboring communities. Given the significance of uh, mobility and the extensive herding, so here my research, the overall research objective is to investigate and model the practice of extensive herding by pastoralists in the commons of southern Ethiopia. The empirical research was conducted in the Borana zone of southern Ethiopia, which represents a typical pastoral food system in the arid and semi-arid environment in East Africa. We selected a, 20, a total of 20 households in five study sites across the zone. A major research method used, used by our team is GPS tracking, and I was involved in building the colors, field testing, and color deployments back in 2013 and 2014. In addition to GPS tracking, I also conducted past participatory mapping to understand the herding activities and decision-making by pastoralists. The GPS tracking data suggests there are three major types of herding at the daily level. The first is base camp based herding in which the herd leaves the base camp early in the morning and follows a path to the major herding area. In the evening, the herd travels back by following the same path. The second is satellite camp based herding in which the herd leaves the satellite camp much later in the morning and wanders through the rangelands to graze at much pace, slower pace compared to the first type. The third is transitional herding in which the herd moves from one camp location to another. With GPS tracking data, we can evaluate the temporal dynamics of cattle behavior by investigating its um, um, travel velocity. Here, I'm showing two cows travel behave, two cows behavior under distinct herding strategies. The above one spend a lot of effort on traveling, especially in early morning and late evening hours rush between base camp and grazing sites. In contrast, in the case below, traveler behavior only accounts for a small proportion, and the cows spend more time on grazing and resting during the daytime. By looking at the spatial pattern of rangeland utilization, I find that the cow that showed less travel behavior indeed 
um, better distributed the grazing pressure throughout the landscape, uh, throughout the herding extent. This cow was relocated to different camp locations as shown here, um, which are next to forage resources, thus minimizing their daily travel distance between camp and grazing sites. In contrast, the cow that used only one camp had to travel long distance along the same corridor repeatedly to reach uh, forage resources. Therefore, camp relocation is crucial to range the sus sustainability. So the next question is, under what conditions do pastoralists practice extensive herding? I build a model to answer this question at the daily level because the decision making of camp relocation is at, made at the daily level. For each day, the herding orbit can be e either considered as a round base camp indicated by the blue ones and away from base camp indicated by the green ones. Then we can estimate the proportion of extensive herding orbit as the response variable. For example, for a sedentarized household, the proportion of extensive herding is zero, but for households that practice in camp relocation, the proportion can be anywhere between um, zero and one. So this slide shows how I construct a model in which the response variable is the proportion of days practicing extensive herding and the predictors include two resource condition variables, two resource user variables, and one external environment variables, which are all at the community level and the household level predictor, which in the, and the random effect predictor. So I took a stepwise approach in modeling by adding the groups of variables, as I mentioned in the last slide. Among the five models, model four performs the best with the lowest AIC value. The numbers in the modeling results are important, but what are more important here is, are the implications of the, of the question of um, the, in terms of the determinants of uh, pastoral mobility and extensive herding. So based on the modeling results, there are four general implications. First, extensive movement through camp relocation is a clear response to environmental stress. When the NDVA values are lower, pastoralists are more likely to practice camp relocation. Therefore, extensive movements through camp relocation should be encouraged as a key adaptation strategy in future policy making. Second, a larger herding extent can facilitate extensive movement. This is straightforward, but given increasing human population, community herding extends a shrinking. And one way to address this challenge is to ensure, encourage inter-community land sharing to facilitate large-scale movement. In fact, certain communities have already been sharing lands with each other, as in the example I introduced in the beginning. And development interventions need to be based on such resource sharing mechanisms instead of strengthening control of a big piece of land. Third, pastoralists with better road access practice less extensive herding. But on the other hand, better road access gives them an opportunity to pursue alternative strategies other than lifestyle herding. Potentially better connection to markets and townships can facilitate livelihood diversification and reduce pressure on the stressed rangelands. Fourth, household level factor, namely herd size, is an insignificant predictor of extensive herding. The broader herding context in the community largely determines the daily herding strategies that a pastoralist can adopt. Therefore, facilitating a favorable herding context will be crucial for large scale rotational grazing that are crucial to achieve sustainable outcomes. Thank you for your attention.